what's going on, Solid Steppers? This is Miss Ward coming to you, coming to you from uh, Highway 79 here in the uh, west coast of Florida, headed to Panama City, and I figured I'd have a conversation about support systems on the tech side. I am blessed that I have a round table of professionals. Shout out to Phil at Atomic uh, Tech Appliance Repair out of Augusta and Ohio. It's my guy. At the end of the day, you got to have those bags. You got to have those connections. Shout out to Brandon at TMM Appliance Repair. Shout out to Rick and Richard Zilka at r and &R in Miami Tech. I'm trying to tell you, man, you got to have people you can pick up that phone and call. Shout out to Courtney of Wilco Appliance Repair. Shout out to Ike all day. Ike pick up the phone anytime I call. You got to have those things. Then you got to do your triage. So right now, part of my coaching package when I'm coaching uh, people about starting their appliance for business or getting out of a rut, things of that nature. If you're interested in any, any coaching or consulting, just uh, hit the links below uh, in the description. But we cover everything from government contracts to hiring subcontractors. It just depends on where you are. You know, a lot of people are not profitable because they, number one, are frustrated and the technical piece is killing them. They're misdiagnosing uh, appliances. They're dealing with irate customers. That's not how we do business over here. We do business, our stuff, this is why I run a boutique appliance repair business meeting. I have a select clientele. I only deal in high end, high end areas, high per capita because it is a concierge service, basically, at a whole nother level. We cover three states and we are never slow, never slow. The key with my business is systems, keeping everything in order. There are gonna be glitches in systems. So let's have a conversation about a glitch. We had a glitch this week with uh, WorkEase in reference to the phone number. So we were changing some things over and customers couldn't call in. You know, pictures and text messages were being bounced and I was losing my mind. But at the same time, I couldn't say nothing because I've had phenomenal service with WorkEase. I have had no issues. They almost got me undercover lazy because WorkEase was one of the few platforms that had that forward thinking move when it came to service where they had everything in place and it was affordable in the beginning, okay? So now, from what I understand, you got to drop 2700 if you want the packages that I have uh, and pay that up front. But the thing y'all sleeping on is they have WorkEase Lite. And so you guys that really want to kind of experiment and understand how these systems work. WorkEase Lite is probably one of the best things you can do because you can schedule, you can communicate with customers. There's a limit of how many you can, but it's enough for you to get your feet wet. You know, you even can do invoices and things of that nature. So WorkEase Lite is absolutely free. You should download the app. That way you can test it out and it's none of that 14 day trial stuff. You know, that's what I like about it. But anyway, I weathered that storm. I was ready to get additional lines, additional phones, whatever I had to do to make sure that my communication was on point uh, for the customer. Now, let me give y'all a heads up because y'all gonna see some of these, uh, probably some heritage flags out here for lack of a better word. This just lets you know how even though you're in Florida, you're still dealing with situations. And this is America. People can believe what they wanna believe you got to know who you are. You got to be on top of your game. That's why I'm always telling people, there's nothing can be said when you're the best. When you put your best foot forward, when you correct an issue when it happens, and when you're constantly leveling up. You know, and that's what I'm talking about. I sent my play my uh, playbook to my students that I'm coaching, let them know what I was doing, what my process was, um, and and attached all the documents from the service manual uh, to where I pulled it from, the exact pages that I was uh, studying and put together. I put together a whole PDF with those pages because that's how I know I am. Like I remember when I first got in the industry and I ain't going to say no names. I ain't going to say no names, Bobby. 
<laughs> anyway, Bobby's my hero and uh, at Pace Appliance Repair. And he used to look at me crazy because he was like, I cannot believe that you study these Samsung modules and do some that and you pull all this information. But I do it because this is not my first, this is not my first skill. This is not my background. So I believe in investing and being over prepared. I mean, I got stuff I ain't even using. I don't care. Cause guess what? When I need it, it's there. And that just shows you as a tech what you gotta do. In order to run a successful business, you have to understand how the appliances work. You have to have a place you can go to get assistance if you get stuck. So what I do is I'm proactive. All I do is pick up the phone and I, you know, go over what I got going on. They go over what they got going on. And this is my circle. You know, I try not to find myself in a situation where I'm calling, it's an SOS I'm sending out because I done did something stupid. Like, prime example, I just left a Gen Air uh, cooktop, gas cooktop. Um, I'd never seen one like this before where you slide it out and, you know, the little uh, burner boxes, they pop right out. They just slide back and up. And, you know, I've never seen that type of rust and corrosion because it's an older unit. Now, of course, I've seen the ones that have the uh, vent hoods in the center, the downdrafts. This one had that, but it's also 45 inches, which is not common. So at the end of the day, even though I knew exactly how I was going to move with this one, I spent time with that appliance so that I could familiarize myself so I could be successful. And that's what I'm talking about. You got to understand when you're going to have to really get out here and do the work. You know, and I mean really do the work. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Do the work. And then you got to be able to sit with yourself and be like, okay, I'm struggling here. I'm struggling there. So what do I need to invest in? And that means usually it's just training. It's just exposure. Once you get the exposure, the confidence is there. I think a lot of times people are so busy grabbing low-hanging fruit and still are leveling up their skills so they can walk in and touch a wolf, touch a coal, touch a, touch a meal, you know what I mean? Deal with Thermidor, uh, take care of the bear. Like these are all sub-zero, come on man. Especially when they make it today, they like, oh, I'm giving sub-zero the side eye, but you didn't hear it from me. The reality is, if you're going to survive in this industry, you must bring skills to the table, whether it be customer service, soft skills dealing with the customer, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, predicting the customer's move so you can be successful and you can anticipate that move and then you can already be at the gate when they show up, you got your game face and you know how to get your bag. See, whenever you're not in control and you haven't looked at the parameters, because a lot of y'all going to places, you haven't looked up the customer's address. You don't know what the hell they bought the house for. You don't know how long they lived there. You know none of the background. I need all that. And then when I go to like, I'll go to realtor.com, look the house up. You know, of course y'all got House Call Pro. They give you Zestimates, woo, woo, woo. I actually like to look because I want to look at the appliances inside I'm looking for. Even though I request model numbers, pictures, and images of the appliance, I still want to know how it's situated in the home so when I go in, I'm not surprised because I'm not with the element of surprise. Y'all might be, but nah, y'all can keep them damn surprises. The reality is I am prepared and I know the layout of that customer house better than they do when I go because that's excellence. People are like, why well, I gotta do all that? It ain't all that. It's all making sure that you can show up, not stuttering, not slipping, because you know they're gonna throw a monkey wrench. They're gonna want you to look at something else. They're gonna want this. You need to be so first in that first appliance you're looking at that they don't want nobody else to touch theirs. That's how my customers are. They be like, nah, we good. Nah, we only we gonna wait on shell. And those are the relationships you want to have, particularly with people have who have income slotted specifically to pay you for your expertise. And that's why I'm successful. That's one of the reasons. Not to mention I'm consistent. Like right now I'm in Panama City. You know, Geo is gonna be working on something on the other coast tomorrow. I will be meeting him as a support system for him because those are the relationships we have because he has walked and driven eight, mile, eight hours to meet me before. So it ain't that real. See, this is the difference. This is the difference between my success and your success. This ward is not only willing to put in the work, 
I'm willing to be consistent with it and then run the play. See, that's the difference. You can't run the play if you don't know the game. And if you're not looking at the rule book, how you gonna win? You don't even understand how warranty companies work. You don't even know how to get the maximum out of them. You don't know how to deal with COD customers at a certain level. You're so busy selling from your pocket, you can't sell nothing with no profit. But that's a different conversation. So with that said, that's all I want to say, man. Stay consistent. Make sure you're doing your uh, pre-planning and triage, which is what I do. And I do it on particularly appliances that I may not touch every day. I refuse to walk in there and look at it. Because ignorant can't discuss nothing with knowledge. I refuse to have that next to my name. I suggest you do the same, y'all. Remember, sometimes you got to step back and then proceed. A lot of times you'll be on an appliance and on a customer issue and you tug a warrant and you don't want to let go. You're proving a point. Now, what you're doing is giving yourself a damn headache if you know what I know. But with that said, again, y'all, like, share, and subscribe. Miss Ward is signing off. Panama City, here I come. Let's go get it.